Welcome to Let's Get Real. My name's Sue Eldridge and I'm here with my fantastic friends. Hi, I'm CC Wilson. Hi, I'm Ali Wilson. Oh. No relation. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Chris Larkin. It's great to have you with us. And today, we, we really want to talk um, about mental health. Well, I think yeah. it's... it's I think it's a well we believe it's a subject that's especially in the church it's not addressed enough mm. Ali kick us off because it's very much part of what you do isn't it it is um I'm really passionate about mental health mm. and you know one in four of us will experience some kind of mental health challenge at some point in our life and some people might be thinking no I re you know I refuse that but actually it's a reality Mm. That, that we are facing. So even if it's not us, we, the likelihood is we are going to know somebody. But you mentioned it's a range, isn't it? Yes. Oh, yeah, it's going to be... Yes, it is a range. A range uh, of what? Sorry. I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute. But we'll either... It will affect us or somebody we know. Yeah, yeah. You know? And... Um, and our mental health is on a, um, a continually changing continuum. So yeah. even in one day, we could start a day in positive mental health and go... You know, yeah, this is going to be a fantastic day, and then something happens, yeah, and then you're like, this is a really rubbish day. You've lived with me then, eh? I have. <laughs> and you could finish your day quite low, thinking, this yeah. is just awful. Yeah. And then in the evening, your mood comes sure. back up. And that is not mental illness, but, mm. you know, and sometimes we're in a phase in our life where we're in quite negative mental health. Yeah. Quite for quite a period of time, sure. and, but that does not make us mentally ill. Mm. So there's a huge difference. The difference between moving from negative mental health into mental illness is a diagnosis. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, wow. so that's the difference. So there's lots of people managing their mental health mm. without any diagnosis whatsoever. And the one in four, we're talking about people who've got a diagnosis. Right. So okay. they're actually more than... So they're wow. actually more than... So they might be wow. suffering from anxiety, they might be suffering from depression, but they've actually gone to the GP and they've either received um, some medication or some counselling or treatment, sure. talking therapy of some kind, or maybe both of those mm. things. And just because we move into mental illness mm. does not mean we will necessarily stay there. No. Nope. Yeah, because with the right treatment, we yeah. can move back out of a diagnosis yeah. and mm. back into yeah. positive mental health. Yeah. You know, so, but I think the worst thing for us as Christians is that we ignore it because we mm. feel like a failure. Yeah. So the instead of dealing with yeah. it, the shame, we, we yeah. end up stuck in a continual cycle yeah. Mm -hmm. of negative mental health and mental illness and we're not really owning it mm -hmm. wow. but I think there's a huge challenge around that and particularly for men my passion is mental health in men mm -hmm. wow. because do we know that out of all the suicides we have and we have 16 suicides a day in this country wow. and 75 percent of those will be male wow, wow. and particularly wow. young men under the age of 30. Oh, it's, it's so so sad because mm. I think whereas women will talk about it a little really bit more, yeah. Yeah, yeah, men have this uh, such bad mm. shame about mm. it, and it's so closed up. And really, really, we need to be supporting men wow. with mental health. Is that's one of my biggest passions? I think it must. Yeah. Be, it must be the talking, isn't it? It's so yes. much more Engaging natural and emotions. normal, isn't yeah. it, for women yeah. to talk about their feelings, feelings and their emotions, whereas men, and yeah. yeah. And so we, there is a release yeah. from just yes, a bit like the shame when you when you bring it out into the light. There yeah. is a re relief. So yeah, there is. Oh, bless yeah. them. So it's so hard, isn't it? Yeah, and I that think, is really hard. You know, hard. there's no. Mm. If, if we were ill. I, we don't believe, you know, God sends illness or anything. But, you know, if you were ill and say, you know, you, you had appendicitis, you wouldn't be going, I'm a complete failure because I've got p yeah. appendicitis. Right, right, yeah. right. And you, you know, or just this pray is, about it. And you wouldn't just pray about it either. You're absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. And you might do that, but then <laughs> they don't <laughs> peritonitis in hospital for a long time. Yeah, but then when we've got mental health, mm, yeah. you're right. We just pray about it. Mm. And we expect 
Mm. And sometimes God does that for people. And sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes you have to go on the journey. And I've shared in a previous show about having a, comp a total and utter burnout. Mm. Um, and um, being in a place where I just couldn't function at all. Yeah. And, and I had to do things to get out of that place. Mm -hmm. You know, and it wasn't just prayer and somebody praying over me. Mm. You know, I had to undergo therapy yeah. to get myself into a better place. Mm. Um, and that's where I learn everything that I now sure. teach. Yeah other people and, and yeah. it's part of that journey and God doesn't just always mm. take it away no. but we've got to break the shame yes, of it have. haven't we but what was the turning point for you then because of course you know like you 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 said that you had the the break but what was the point where you said okay like I need to get more help than just prayer when and I just... couldn't do anything other than watch the fish swim around the fish pond yeah wow and, wow. and, and I, I just couldn't and you knew enough about it to know that you needed help, didn't you? And was there shame attached to it and all oh, of that? Oh, yes, like, and some like of my Christian you... friends fell out with me. Yeah. Really? Yeah, because they were just like... And, and it's draining, let's be honest. Yeah. Living with somebody as well who's, who's in a really bad place is mm. draining for those around. Sure, sure. It's really hard sure. for family, it's really hard yeah. for close friends. And some of them were just like, oh, I can't do with you when you're like this. You're usually such good fun. Yeah, I think... Wow. Um, I feel really convicted, actually, because cause I was one of those Christians. I really was one of those Christians that um, that didn't have, didn't understand it at all. Mm -hmm. You know, I, it had never been something that was talked about in our in our home. We'd never, I'd never had any knowing mm. um, yeah. um, interaction with anyone with mental health, and so I probably, and I, I, I've said before, you know, how I had all this energy and I was almost mm -hmm. superwoman, and I was quite judgmental of people. I remember when you wore knickers <laughs> on the outside. Yes, it did. <laughs> it I was just a phase. Look. It was just a phase, Ali. <laughs> I grew out of it. But I really didn't have any understanding or time, and I probably would have been mm. one of those people who judged other people until, like I've said before, I, I got the diagnosis of you're depressed and you're clinically depressed mm. and you need to mm -hmm. go on medication and you do and um and so how was that for you then like when you when you got the diagnosis well well, well as, apart from sobbing and telling him i, w I wasn't depressed mm -hmm. at all yeah. in the chair <laughs> and and he said it's just a chemical imbalance in your brain and i know it was a burnout it was mm. pure burnout but um so walking that through with god and understanding that, walking that through with fear, because my biggest fear was that I would be, I'd have ME. Mm. Oh, right, that was okay. a huge fear for me because right. my depression really worked in, it was a physical thing, so I couldn't mm. move, I couldn't walk, I was very weak. And, um, and so I walked, went on that journey and, and then I experienced other people's judgment on me. So I'd get little mm. well, get well cards mm. from people in our church saying, get well, but I feel it's because you drink wine that you were ill. Are you serious? I'm so serious. And then another one. Because Jesus, <laughs> yeah, Jesus get ill. Yeah, he was so well. ill. <laughs> and then I had another card come through saying, um, wow. uh, because I was working full time as uh, it, I had uh, in business, and uh, I got another card came through saying, get well. I think it's because you've got, I think you're ill because you've got one foot in the world and one foot in the church. You know, I think you wow. need to know a way. Wow. And, um, and so I just, I <clears throat> did work that through and, um, and I learned how how to, I took my medication, I, I, believe, I still I pray. Say, yeah. yeah, did you take I, medication? I, yes, I did! <laughs> Hallelujah for medication! You know, like we say, we, mm. chemical imbalance in the brain, OK? Yeah. If somebody said to you, Chris, um, I'm afraid your pancreas is not working and it's not producing enough insulin, yeah, and it's causing you to be diabetic, yeah. right? You wouldn't dream of going... Well, that I, I refuse that medication. I reject that in the I name of Jesus' that name. in Jesus' name. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm not going to take it. Mm. Because you'd be dead. Overcome. Yeah. I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. Yeah. I don't need to do that. And yet, this yeah, is the it's same. So and people true. are so... Do you think so it's different, though? Like, no, it isn't different. In, in, oh, I'm, 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 I don't... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, have you finished? <laughs> I'm just answering your question before you've said it. I think it may be in the way that people think about it is yes. different. And in it terms of, in, in terms of like, oh, if I take this, then maybe I won't be myself. Maybe I won't, maybe. May, maybe I won't sense God or, you know, maybe it will prohibit my communication perhaps 
we've got maybe maybe this is mm. you know the, some of the thought processes that I people may so have. I was so ill. I just I needed it to to start functioning so, again. You know, yeah. everything had. I was going to say I don't think down. people can meet with God and hear God properly when you're in the no. midst of anxiety and depression. I was I I, I, I needed it to bring me yeah. fog through a little fog. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. but I know. So so that was my first real interaction with mm. um, mental health, and then of course, you know Harriet. You know, with her anorexia, that and that I was, too have a daughter yeah, with you anorexia, and you, you're dealing with that now, and um, yeah. and that is, you know, that is a such a sad, devastating illness, and um, and did you know that they found that you have a genetic disposition for that? Really? Yeah, really? and and so well. with eating disorders, there's a genetic disposition first of all wow. for that, but if you didn't have the triggers, you wouldn't develop. The illness, sure. Okay, but the second thing that they found is there's a lot of extra um, electrical um, activity in the front of the brain, which is where we process emotion, mm. Mm. and they have far more, and, wow. and, and it also relates to food in the front part of our brain. Wow. So there's a lot more electrical wow. stuff going on for people that have eating disorders mm. in the front wow. of their brain. So we're not talking about just pull yourself together right. and just eat. Right. What's the matter with you? Right. And that's, I mean, that's what yeah. I would have said. Yeah. Just eat. And it's, if you want yeah. to be better, just eat a burger, babes. You know, it's as simple as that. Watch me. I'll show you how yeah. to do it. <laughs> she says yeah. pulling out 12 crispy creme donuts. <laughs> from just the watch table. me. Look at yeah. Or any other but kind of donuts. I think that information is yeah. really good, because, I mean, I, I, don't, I'm, I don't know much about, you know, anorexia at all. So just listening to that, I think mm. that's something which we need to speak about a bit mm. more, like on mm. platforms, like, you know, for two people it's to true. have daughters mm. that are challenged with this at the moment. Yeah. It's just like, wow, I didn't, I didn't know that yeah. in terms mm. of the chemical imbalances. Yes. Or, yeah. Wow. So, so how did you deal with the church issues? I mean, it's quite shocking what you said. Yeah. Well, I suppose because um, for six months I, I couldn't really go to church. I couldn't cope with crowds. So when I did mm. feel better, I would go um, as the meeting start, had already started and I'd sit at the back and then I'd leave. So I could just enjoy being in God's presence and, and worshipping and everything, but I didn't have to have that interaction. I just, I, I think, again, it's talking to Tim. So I talked the shame out mm. um, and said, you, do you think, I suppose I did go, said, you, babes, do you think this is true? You know, because I didn't want, you know, is this true? And he'd just go, no, it's just rubbish, Sue, you know, and it's not who you are and everything. Thing. And um, and that's okay, I suppose, because I'd been so judgmental, mm. you know, because I'd understood, and I, and so I kept saying, you know, and I did do a lot of God. Is this just me? Is mm. is this something I've done? You know, I, though I guess there was, mm. and that's not a bad thing as long as you listen yeah. to the answer yeah. Yeah. and you accept the answer, you know. And um, and I knew it wasn't, you know, I knew it was nothing I'd done wrong, yeah. and I could start seeing myself getting better. So then hope came mm. and everything. And what the good thing in it is that um, I never, ever went back to my full capacity. I was saying um, in a previous programme how I had a capacity that was so huge, I could I yep. could be superwoman because mm. I had this huge... And I never went back to that. So now it's like, I think the, the rest of the family was a bit shocked mm -hmm. because they'd be like, this needs doing, and I'm going, oh, I've reached my limit now. <laughs> Do it yourself. And was that because you consciously, like, you recognised the indicators I that could possibly trigger... Yeah. I think, I, think I just couldn't do it. Couldn't they do did it. say mm. it's like a bit like an elastic band. You can yeah. stretch it, it, but it'll mm. never be able to go back mm. quite. And I was really quite happy. And now I actually delight. Yeah. In not... <laughs> oh, there was another <laughs> snort. <laughs> I actually... you know how I describe it to people? I like your it. physical yeah. bank account. Yeah. Mm. Right? So if you've got this pot of money in your physical bank account, um, in your financial bank account, and, and the roof blows off your house, and, and the insurance said to you, well, you didn't keep it in good enough repair, so we're not paying. So you have to draw like £6,000 out and put a new roof on your house. And then, you know, you forget, don't put the handbrake on your car and it rolls down a hill and, and they go, well, you didn't put your handbrake mm. on. So that's not covered under insurance. So now you've got to find another 6000 to go mm. buy a cheap car yeah. to, to replace it. Then when the kettle goes... Yeah. Yeah, you're going, well, we can't buy a new kettle. Yeah. 20 quid, I haven't got 20 quid for a kettle mm -hmm. now because I've just spent 12,000 yeah, doing these things. So I can't do that. Yeah. And, and 
our emotional bank accounts are like that. We have mm. these payouts along the way. And when we're not paying in, when there's mm. less going in than there is coming so out. how do we pay in? Mm. It's finding the things that pay in yeah. for you. So it's the people that do you good and making time for the people that do you good. Mm. It's making, if you're an introvert, it's like, mm. we were, and I'm <laughs> omnivert, okay? But it's finding, mm. I know when I actually just need to be on my own and I've mm. reached the end and therefore I go and have time on my own. It's like, leave me alone because mm. I need to recharge my batteries. Mm -hmm. It's knowing and understanding yourself mm -hmm. and listening to your inner self because yeah, before I was ill, my inner self was going, no, stop. Yeah. And I was going, shut up, shut up. I've got all this to do. I just have to do That's this. That's exactly as it is. But what, you what, know, do you, what do you reckon like caused you to ignore the red flag? Because I'm sure there are people now who, you yeah. know, there's red flags that are waving, you know, like yeah. this carnival. And then they're not then yeah. they're not paying attention. So I what? think it's about we have an overdeveloped sense of responsibility, mm. I would say. Yeah. We think we're responsible for everything. Yeah. Yeah. Super Family, That's a really good job, point. Yeah. everybody There's else. There's only one saviour and it's not you. Yeah. I love this saying that you have. There's Say it again. again. Say it There's again. only one saviour and it's not you. Yeah. That's right. That's good. Yeah. What's your story? Well, I suppose I mean I had burnout, I was on medication well, yeah. for depression. Um, I won't say I was suicidal, but I think I could have become mm. suicidal because I couldn't see... Be there was a blackness and mm. I couldn't mm. see beyond that. Mm -hmm. And I think in my relationships in church, it was more to spiritualise it, mm. to yeah. take it to the cross. So we'll pray for you. Or we'll just keep coming around and praying for you. But you can't... Always. Oh, it's one of my big things. <laughs> I, I actually run a course called Understanding Mental Health mm -hmm. for churches because there are so many people, very well-meaning people in churches, mm -hmm. who are not qualified mm -hmm. to deal with mental health yep. and try and dabble in it, mm -hmm. and they can make this person so much worse and prevent them going to get the help they yeah. need. Mm -hmm. And, I, and the, the mental health first aid, I think every church should have somebody who's Absolutely. qualified as a mental health mm. first aid. But then you get the guilt thinking, well, it, what's wrong with me again? Yes, mm. again. But, you know, I take it to the cross yes. and I'm still ill. Yes, sure. that's right. Yeah. It's huge guilt. But, it's, but as you say, it's like appendicitis. Well, it you could take appendicitis to the cross, but yeah. God's given you different ways that's of right. being mm. free of that yeah. pain. That's right. Yes. You know, and I needed to be free of the pain. Mm. Yes, you did. So that I could go to the cross mm. and receive prayer and it be powerful for me. Wow. That's right. Wow. And it's Cece, true. What about what about you and your experience, especially in the, the black community, in the black churches? Yeah, you? yeah. You know, I, when, when I was around, it was 15 years old. Um, I'd spoken in the previous show that I had gone through, you know, grooming and then had been yeah. raped. And it was just very kind of a confusing time for me. At 15, trying to process my emotions, I, I'm, I mean, I, I, I remember bits and pieces, but not all of it, but I can sure. imagine that I was feeling very, very depressed. Yeah. I mean, I would sleep for 24 hours wow. straight. Like, my mum would wake me up thinking that I had wow. passed away wow. because it, I just wanted to... That was my Cut escapism. Yeah, yeah. And um, so that was kind of a way for me to actually help with my mental health. But the, the part that I think where, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak, was I, I took tablets. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, it's time for me to. I'm, yeah, I'm tapping it, out. I've, I've had Not enough of this world. Not medication tablets. Not medicated. Like it was, it was tablets that I, I took to just bump me off, basically. Yeah. And I sat down. I wrote that note, and mm. I pinned it to my door. I had a teddy bear and a hi-fi. That's all I owned at that time. I was like, give that to my niece. Uh -huh. You know, that's you know, in my will. Um, <laughs> and and I woke up from that experience, and I'm like, whoa, like I'm still here. But I remember the day when I woke up, and I'm thinking. I just want to escape. Like, mm. I just don't, I don't want to be here. But I, I was attending a black majority church around that time, or at least I had access to um, a black majority church. But in my experience, it seems to be something that we don't really speak about. Right. And it, there's, I feel like there's cultural aspects to that. Okay. Like, you know, mental health, very much connected to shame. Yeah. Um, and we don't want to bring shame on the family. You know, oh, really very yeah, much. Wow. yeah, very much so. Like we wouldn't want to bring shame. Like, oh, we we don't speak about that. But there are a lot of people in you know in the black community who do have mental health issues, yeah. very very seriously. So, wow. but it's just ignored, or we can just pray about it. Or for the lack of education, yeah. it will look there. There will be a kind of like 
a, a sense of, well, this is connected to something spiritual. This person's got sure. a demon of some kind, you know, and wow. that's what now we need to take them through deliverance rather than seeing like, OK, well, this could actually this be bipolar. Yeah. It could be, you know, it could be something else. Yeah. So, you know, in my wow. experience, I've seen that it's a very, very hush, hush topic and there's mm -hmm. a lot of stigma attached yeah. to it. So yeah. not many people do actually want to Sounds speak like about we, that. We could have several programs on this. I think, oh, yeah. I think ladies, yeah. so I mean, much. we have literally just scratched the surface. Yeah, absolutely. But you know, the exciting thing is mm. after this break, after this Before break. Before we have this break. Okay. Mm. I've just got something. Is that okay? Can Please. I just yep. share this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I really feel that there's somebody watching and you are fearful for the life of your child. Mm. Okay, and I want to share something with you and I believe that you're fearful because of a mental health issue. And I think you're fearful that your child is going to die. And I want to share two things with you that God showed me. Okay, and then I want to teach you a declaration. And the first is that when, when we look at the Passover and the people of Israel were coming out of Egypt and God told them to put the blood of the Passover lamb mm. around their doorpost so that the spirit of death passed over their family mm -hmm. and, and didn't take their child. <clears throat> and we can do that now. We can put the blood of Jesus, who mm. is our Passover lamb, around the doorpost of our children's life that yeah. the spirit of death will pass them by mm -hmm. okay and and this is something that i've had to do with my <laughs> with my daughter and that Sue's, mm. you know, our, our children shouldn't be here, yeah. but they are. Okay? Come on. Absolutely. Yeah. But if you don't yeah. know how to pray for your children, mm. and you might go, and that you are saying, but that was for the firstborn, and this is not my firstborn. But we're all firstborn mm. under Jesus mm. because we're all That's heirs, good. and the heirs yeah. were the firstborn. Mm. So we don't have second, third, fourth born children. We only have first yeah, born good. in the kingdom of yeah. God. So you need to declare the blood mm. of the Passover lamb over the doorposts yeah. of your children's lives. Mm. Yeah. And the enemy is defeated by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. And your testimony is that my children belong to the Lord yeah. mm. and their lives are in his hands and they will live or die by the hand of God and no other hand. Come on. Yeah. OK, and the, that is what releases you from fear mm. and helps you to move into hope and helps you to move into faith. Mm. So what I would say to you is, am I OK? Can we just, just, yeah, just, can yeah. we just do on, this? this I'm important. just going to pray this over your children. Yeah. As I say over my child, you just say it along with me, but you put in the name of your child. OK, but is that OK? Yeah. Come on, yeah, let's, okay. do it. let's just do this. Mm. Jesus, Thank you, Jesus. 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 Lord, we speak mm. the redeeming power yes. of the blood yes, of Jesus, yes, yes. our oh, yeah, Passover yeah. lamb, yes. over the doorposts of the lives of our mm. children. And we say, spirit of death, you have no hold and no authority over mm. our children because we declare that they are covered in the blood yes. and they belong to the Lord. Yes. And their, uh, their lives are firmly in the hands of our loving, faithful daddy. Yes. And yes. only yes. he has say over their lives. Mm. And we refuse to give in to you fear yeah. and we refuse to bow to you, spirit yes. of death. Yes. But mm. we say mm. that our lives are hidden in the mm. hand of in the life of Jesus mm. and we are Father. heirs with him yes, yes, for yes. all that you have promised Thank and we you, speak Jesus. over our children that you mm. will walk in the full promise of everything on, that yes, God has Jesus promised you yes. Yes, it will be yes, fulfilled yes. in your mm. life and yes, nothing yes, and nobody yes. will separate you from that yes. or rob you of it yes. in Jesus name yes, yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Wow. Amen. Wow. That's, that's so. Don't yep. apologise. That's I exciting. Just, yep. but we could. We, we literally could yeah. be talking about this for the next week. But um, after the break, please come back because we have got an amazing guest. We've got Jane Banfall, and we are going to be carrying this topic over. So see you in a mo. You can most painful situations into something of purpose and value and you can be renewed and restored from something that 
would seem to have completely shattered a person. I needed that time in the wilderness to actually encounter the personhood of Jesus Christ, separate to the church and separate to religion. You lead me we can take our hopelessness that we hold and our brokenness and we can put it on him. There's a testimony from me saying that you can get out of it and that you can see hope restored to you. We get to witness the hand of God in the glove of human circumstance and human organization. That might be the church, it may be mercy, but I can tell you now, mercy is not the answer. But we will signpost you to the one who is. excited can you tell <laughs> because, well, actually I don't know if that's my excited face or my constipated face but anyway I'm really excited because we've got the lovely Jane Bamford with us and I only met Jane for the first time last month and um, I think she's my new BFFF but don't Alison. tell Alison please don't no, tell Alison I have no friends now <laughs> But Jane, welcome. Thank you for coming to be with us on Let's Get Real. Thank you, Sue. It's, it's great to be here. <laughs> well, in previous programmes, we've been talking about multitasking. Uh oh. Mm. And I've got written here that you're a counsellor, you're a pastor, you're a coach. But I'm really interested. You used to be a fashion designer. Journalist. Fashion journalist, even better. Have you got any tips for us? Well, <laughs> if you insist. Yes. You have to always dress from the inside out. Wow. Yeah. What does that mean? From your heart. Because your heart is who you really are. Wow. Mm. And not your size. It's what fits you, what you're comfortable yeah. in. Yeah. And in terms of colour, God created the whole universe and the colours are out there. Mm. Come on. You know, the burnt oranges like she's wearing, Cece's wearing, the greens and olives. You know, the blacks can be one with the greys. So look at nature. Brilliant. And you can dress. Brilliant. <laughs> so I know you've got a heart for the broken. Yes. Tell me how that works out in your life. Well, if you, you said that I did study fashion journalism and I always wanted to write and, and I also love fashion and it was great. And then about 20 years ago, I landed my first job in one of the newspapers as a fashion assistant. Wow. And it was great, but around that same time, God had begun to heal my own heart of a lot of things that I didn't know were in there. You know, we were talking about being real. I was seeking a deeper walk with God at the time, and the more I pressed into intimacy, the Lord would show me and point to things in my heart. Wow. And he was, so he was doing a lot in my heart, and as I shared this in my church and with other people, people would come to me and say, Jane, somebody touch me inappropriately as a child, can you help me? Mm -hmm. Or this happened to me. And I was doing that. And eventually I found myself, like they say, I'd worked so hard all my life to get this job, which had prospects in fashion. <laughs> so my ladder is leaning against this awesome building of my life. Mm -hmm. And I find God changing my desires and I'm making my way downwards mm. into people caring and counseling. So I went to do a degree in theology and counseling. Wow. And so he, he slowly, as he healed my heart, mm. changed my desires wow. as well. Wow, yeah. wonderful. Wow. Yeah. You, um, you will not be surprised to hear that we're constantly, constantly approached to be fashion journalists. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting exhausting, isn't it? I, I, I'm turning people away constantly going, can you come and sort my wardrobe? But anyway, but, um, obviously you, were, you loved that job. How hard was it when God mm. called you to do that? And what if somebody else was feeling that they were being called to something, but they loved what they were doing? Mm. You know, I, I asked the Lord when it started, you know, and say, God, why? I love you so much. If you wanted me to study counseling, I would have gone straight into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Lord yeah. didn't answer. And many years ago, I had a client sitting in front of me who was suffering from clinical depression. She'd been mm -hmm. referred to me by a psychiatrist. She always wore black whenever she came into my office. Wow. And she sat down, she hung her head down. Oh. 
and we just worked as much as I could. As a therapist, I can work with whatever a client brings. Yeah. And then six months into the therapy, one day she walked into my office, she had a bright yellow tank top on, wow. and she just beamed at me wow. and sat down. And then I said, oh, we look bright today. Mm. And she said, it's because of you. Wow. But I had never in the six months wow. talked about what she was wearing. And I heard the Holy Spirit say within me, that's how I use your fashion. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. That's the anointing of that. that yeah. That's and amazing. then later wow. on, yeah, God spoke to me somewhere else and said, you used to dress the outsides of people, but now I'm calling you to dress the insides wow. of my people. Wow. And you would know what that means. And I said, yes, sir, wow. I will. Wow. Absolutely. And it made a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. So, but it's hard sometimes because we think, don't we? Oh, mm. yeah, so many people think, oh, being called into ministry. Mm. Yeah, and my ministry's in the world, it's not mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. the church, and you do both. Mm. Yeah, and we think that's like the greatest thing, but sometimes you are, you know, you are doing something that you absolutely loved, don't you? So what yeah. would you say to people if they're really struggling between, between those tensions? I mean, one of the things I always tell people, especially young people, is that every ability you have, every talent you have, Absolutely. God will use it. Mm -hmm. yes. If you're willing to put it into his hands, nothing you studied, nothing you know how to do, whether it's cooking, whether it's writing, everything this master will use. Mm -hmm. But what God does is that the journey towards his purpose for our lives, it's a journey. Mm -hmm. And so, when he began to change my desire from fashion journalism ah, right. into counseling, he was also healing my heart. Mm. And ah, so, so he did begin to change your desire exactly. ah, right, okay. as well. Yeah, but, but, but I was struggling <laughs> with the nice clothes. <laughs> yeah. there, there there's, was a a but. there's a big but. There's <laughs> no, no, a big but. No, 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 no yeah. it's not this big it's but, big but it's a big but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was struggling with, oh my goodness, all these packs I get in my job, all these yeah, nice yeah, things. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and giving that up, like sacrificing yeah. that. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to be real. Wow. And I was walking through a department store, fine London department store mm. once, and I, I was going up the escalator and I saw this person carrying so many shopping bags, yeah. designer. And I went, wow, I would love to go shopping like that. And yeah. again, I heard the voice of mm. God say, if you would come after me and serve wow. me, yeah. I would give you anything that the come Gentiles on. seek come after. It's like, and, oh, yeah. it's like seek first the kingdom of God and his come righteousness and yes. all yes. things will be added. Yep. Who and, knew? and in that, you, mm -hmm. like, clearly God mm -hmm. transitioned you from mm -hmm being, mm -hmm. you know, fashion lady in the world and transitioning and making it look different in the church and for the people. I think that's just fantastic. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I and love and that. he's been faithful in that yeah. sense, you yes. know, I, yeah. yeah. Can I, I, ju I, I've just had, you know, a bit of a light bulb moment mm, because really? I was Ding. just thinking, I know, it really <laughs> has been a bit like that because I had a job that I loved. I mean, I was in sales, I was a business mm -hmm. development manager and I won't, I'll do it really, I loved it. Mm. And I can remember saying to God, don't ever ask me to give up my job, you know, which is a really silly thing yeah. to say. And then I did mature and, um, and I said, if you ever ask me to give up my job, mm. I, I hold it lightly. Mm but please, Daddy, please could I love what you take me into mm. as much as I love my job. Mm. And, um, and it was very clear to me when to go, and so I left. And um, actually, it was I, I gave up my job and went straight into a church split, which was incredibly painful. And wow. We should just mm. say that those two things were not connected. No. <laughs> I, well, <laughs> yeah. but anyway, but, mm. but, but I've just had this realization that I'm mm. sat here. Mm. I've been here all week. We've, this has been mm. so exciting. This is so different to anything mm. I'd ever do. And I said to him, please let my, what mm. you take me into be as exciting. Yeah. And here I am, it's a wow. light bulb moment. Wow. I just awesome. like, yeah. you are such a faithful God. Mm. That yes. is incredible. So, yes. yeah. He's so good. <laughs> he is, yes, he is. He's so good. Wow. So, um, Cece, yes. you, I know you were dying to ask him. Yes, yes, yes. Ask so you, lovely Jane. So you do a lot of work with young people. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say are the hardest issues that they're facing? I mean, wow, right now, good question. oh gosh. I mean, it's, it's something that's been burning in my own heart mm. for a while. 
a lot of young people are, are, are fearful, mm. and that is manifesting anxiety and depression. I mean, the World Health Organization mm -hmm. predicted years ago that by 2020, depression will be the number one mental health issue. Wow. And when I read that, it was many years ago, and I see 2020 coming in two years' corner. time. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. But I, there are a number of factors that are making young people so fearful. I, I know we live in a world that is so fearful. Mm. We, we hear rumors of wars and there's terror and then there's mm -hmm. financial meltdowns and things have happened. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a number of factors, that's one. But the key thing also is because young people, obviously the digital revolution yes. and social media pressurizes them yep. to yep. tell their life story yes. every day in pictures. Yeah. And, yeah. and when you do that, you know, a picture says a thousand words. Yeah, absolutely. You, absolutely. you are inclined to copy, mm, to feel, yeah. ooh, I don't have this. To fabricate the Fabri truth. Exactly. Yeah. And then there's the stress also yeah. of something that I, I'm sure has not been articulated maybe, but it's there. Mm. It's a fear of failure. Yeah. yeah. I don't and know where that came from. Yeah. yeah. Into the educational system mm. or into parenting. Young people are mm. so yeah. afraid mm. of failing. You know, I yeah. tell my own daughters who are young adults, we, we talk about it at home. Failure is an event. Mm. It is not a person. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Also, That's so we good. learn Brilliant. from failure. Love that. Every yes, success do. story has failure in it. It's so true. young people have all these factors and obviously the other factor as well is the absence of, of, of parents and role models. Mm -hmm. When I say parents, I'm talking about the emotional absence. Yeah. Yes. You yeah. know, of, yeah. of parents yeah. because yeah. we are doing relationships. So we have social media. Yeah. We have all these things, Facebook, mm. which is supposed to connect us. Yeah. And yet more people are so lonely That's right, and because isolated. there is a disconnection yeah. because we're not doing like what we're doing even around right. this table right. face to face. Yeah. That's right. When yeah. you connect yeah. with somebody, this part of your face, mm -hmm. it's a big word called the obiculi oculi. Mm -hmm. It's the part of the face responsible for facial expression. Mm -hmm. So when I look at your face mm -hmm. as you're nodding to me, Cece mm -hmm. and, and <laughs> Sue, um, you're hearing my heart. Mm -hmm. So a lot of young people now and children grow up in home they get in, their parents are like, yep, good evening, yep, yep, yep. Or Nobody. their faces in the phones. No, yeah. So they're on, or their parents yeah. are on the phones, disconnected yeah. completely. Wow. So there's that disconnect, mm. you know, and all of that creates anxiety and fear mm. in their heart. So and it's a number of factors. Value. Yeah. yeah, and trying to value. juggle, wow. isn't it? It's yeah. trying to juggle being a working parent and, and everything else that you, you people have, you know, um, high... De highly demanding jobs and, and sometimes the give is a family, mm -hmm. yeah. isn't it? It's not that no. they're trying to neglect, but, you, but there is a neglect that comes from that unless we work hard for it not to. You yeah. have to work hard. You have to work children hard. Children and raising children mm -hmm. doesn't fit into a to-do list. It doesn't. Right. It's right. true. No. Right. It's no, not it doesn't. the next thing on the list. Mm -hmm. It is spelled T-I-M-E, yeah. time. Time, yeah. yeah. And we are pressured for time in our world Yes, now. we are, you're right. Yeah. I mean, we, we spoke about, you mm. know, like some of the causes, mm -hmm. but how do we actually support these young people? Like, what can, what can we do, mm. you know, to support young people who are going through troubling times? I mean, the government has its own methods, but I believe the church has a huge role Absolutely. to play in this mm -hmm. because, yeah. you know, we're all broken people. Mm. You know, Ed Stetzer, I believe, said that a church without the broken is a broken church. Mm. So wow. we need to be great and wow. make our churches wow. safe yeah. for young people to be able to come in and also ask us mm. the tough questions of faith and of life. Mm. That means we need to be real with our own lives. Yeah. Yeah. We need to be yeah. real with our successes Absolutely. and our failures. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, that I didn't just get here. Sure. You sure. know, I've been on a journey with Absolutely. God, you know, so we yeah. need to be real in church. Yes. And, 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 and communicate our faith in real terms. Yeah. So, but what does, what, sorry, just to mm -hmm. jump in, because I'm, I'm yeah. quite passionate yes. about this particular yeah, area. Absolutely. Um, just being that my story starts out mm -hmm. by being groomed and then ra raped by a leader of a church, like a, in, yeah. in the youth um, mm -hmm. um, ministry. What needs to happen in the infrastructure? Like, how do we, how do we introduce leadership being real? 
how, because sometimes they're just very much stuck in their ways or they, mm. there's this kind of like image that we have to have it mm -hmm. all together and it has to be perfect or mm -hmm. you know I couldn't possibly tell you about an area of weakness mm -hmm. because then that might mm -hmm. you know reflect mm -hmm. badly on my leadership mm -hmm. or how people respect me but how do we how do we do that to create that environment that is safe for, for young mm. people to come in say well you know this is yeah. what we're going to do well the anointing starts from the top so Absolutely. that means it starts with those of us leading churches mm. to be real people because hiding and shame and all of that that mm. leaders are not it's mm. part of our psychopathology it began in the mm. garden yeah. when Adam yeah. hid from yeah. God yeah. Yeah. he said yeah. I was afraid and I hid and I was ashamed mm. all sure. those things sure. you know so we sure. need to if we're real leaders mm. real yeah. then we need to be open with our own journey mm. you but know you, you're a leader in a church I am you? a leader so in a church what things would you have in your church? Could well, or would have? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I'm very real with my own life story mm. and where God is taking me and where he's brought me to sure. on the journey. Then also doing trainings with our pastoral carers mm. to, to be able to feel safe to receive yeah. young people and mm. just anyone who is hurting. I need to be able to feel safe yeah. to share mm. with you that I'm fearful, I'm thinking of taking my life. Mm. But in order for me to share that with you, I need to know that you're not going to judge me, yeah. right. which happens a lot a in lot. church. Yeah. I need you yeah. to know that sometimes life gets hard and dark mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that you need to receive people like that, that mm -hmm. we live in a broken world, which means things don't work yeah. as, yeah. as, as yeah. God intended Absolutely. it to in original intent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so create, first time with the leadership, making our own lives open and vulnerable, yeah. Yeah. you know, and secure. Mm -hmm. in our God mm -hmm. and then modeling that to young people and yeah. young adults and children and being real with our faith you know mm -hmm. tell your children or tell young people how you came to faith mm -hmm. what that means to you to have Jesus yeah. in your life yes. you know my, my daughters yeah. know that I tried to kill myself at 14 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the reason was because life got dark mm -hmm. and I was I felt hopeless mm -hmm. yes. and I didn't know yeah that I had an anchor at the time in mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, yeah. who was yeah. a sure, stead and mm -hmm. steadfast anchor okay. for my soul. That's right. mm -hmm. You know, I didn't know that 14, mm -hmm. but now yeah. I have communicated mm -hmm. that. I'm sure. not ashamed of it sure. because I know yeah. that to have tried to kill mm -hmm. myself meant mm -hmm. that my mental health was very poor. poor. Yeah. Yeah. With That's what I know yeah. now, so we've just been talking well. about yeah. that. We've really? just, yeah, yeah, just before yeah. you came on. Mm. And talking about the shame. And, and so we shame. shouldn't be ashamed mm. of mental health. Yes. It's mm. so important. Really is. But we yeah, were saying part. shame is, yeah. is thinking that we're the problem. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. not like it's a sin, it's I'm the problem. Yeah. I shouldn't be yeah. like this. Yeah. Mm. Which is much more difficult to deal with than yeah, sin. It is. Yeah, because yeah. that's what shame is. Like shame says, I am a bad yeah. person. Mm. You know, and I mm. think As sometimes you're having done a bad thing. Exactly. And I think there's a there's a very thin line, but they present similarly they between shame and guilt. Mm. So guilt says I did something wrong. Mm -hmm. Um and people may do something wrong, but they mm. adopt shame mm -hmm. in that and mm -hmm. walk around in a shame mm -hmm. storm for yeah. years. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And, 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 it's, and I think as well, it's quite, sometimes it's, you're quite oblivious to it because it didn't, for, for me personally, I was walking around in shame and I didn't know didn't, and, yeah. until one day I was reading, mm. um, I don't know if you've read this book called um, The Gift of, um, Gift of Imperfection by yeah. Brene Brown. Oh, yes. And she spoke <laughs> about the difference between guilt and shame. Yeah. And I was actually in a cabin in Northern California mm because I just needed to be with the Lord. And, and God thought. said to me, he said, where do you see the truth here mm. that you're a bad person? Like recount all of the different scenarios mm. that say mm. that this is true, like you're a bad mm. person. And I sat yeah. there in this cabin, it was just a bed and a microwave and a fridge. And I sat there and I couldn't find anything to support that. Mm. And I realized like, oh my gosh, I've been thinking and believing yeah. a lie for so long but it's not actually true. Wow, it's and I so think true. a lot of us can walk around in shame yeah. and that could cause us to begin to mess with our mental it's health so because it's true. just our self-perception and we start to live yeah. out of a paradigm yeah. that's yeah. not even real. Yeah. It's so true, it's God, so yeah. true. Wow. Yeah. I mean, what happened to you that day, Cece, yeah. when God said, is that true? Was that you encountered grace? grace. Yeah. Because yeah. grace is the thing that yeah. heals shame. Absolutely. Because grace says, I'm looking mm -hmm. at you, Cece, yeah. and you are my beautiful daughter. Yeah. And what shame does is that shame assaults mm. our very personhood. Yeah. Yeah. And it is yeah. unlike guilt, just mm -hmm. like you said, mm -hmm. it's, it's something not on the outside, it's on the inside. Right. Right. And it, right. it manifests right. in things like something is not quite right, right. with me, mm -hmm. yeah. but I don't know what. 
Yeah. And it, it is healed in yeah. grace. You say, yeah. what's that? It's when we, we communicate mm. and we accept people and mm -hmm. we, we, we offer that same grace that we sure. experience yeah. in our yeah. salvation, yeah. That, yeah. that I love you, yeah. you know, and, and then the child doesn't understand or the broken person, like mm -hmm. my clients sometimes mm -hmm. don't understand, but I'm here every week, I care. Yes. Then they go, okay, then I go, I care. And then yes. one day they walk they into it. my office and they go, <sighs> it yes. has dropped they, they from the head into the, heart. Into the core of who yeah. they are. Wonderful. An ongoing Super message of grace, yes. yes. Lovely. Wow. Yeah. Love that. Oh, I love that. Wow. She got a book. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you got a book? No, Jane, um, please tell us. I know, you, I know you have a book, and I am so thoroughly enjoying reading it. Tell us about it, because I want everybody to go and buy your book. <laughs> <laughs> it took me so long to write this first book. I've actually almost finished the second. Be the reason was because I cried so much writing it. It's called Lessons from the Chair. 12 Empowering Lessons from the Therapist Chair. Wonderful. So I've got a lesson on humility. That's the first lesson. Mm. How humbled I am that God will cover my own brokenness mm. as he continues to heal me and allow me the honor of sitting in a chair to receive the brokenness wow. of another. And my clients think, wow, I'm so amazing. And I know in myself, wow. I'm just wow. grace. Like Come gracefully on. broken, as Matt Redman would say, yeah. and yeah. Tasha Cobbs, and, but yeah. yet I'm unable to receive. So I've got a lesson on own your pain. Mm. Got a lesson on families, they're here to stay. Mm. Wow. Yes. Yes. They might not love us sometimes. <laughs> they're supposed to love us. Yes. Yes. They but is that, is, they are mm. our first love and bonds in, the, in life. Mm. So I've got a lesson on families. And the last but one lesson is hope. Are we there yet? That's what my clients always ask me. Are we there? You know, yeah. am I the worst client you've ever seen? Oh. Will I ever get better? Oh. Yeah. And my long, short answer is hope. Yeah. Yes. You're not there yet, but you will get there. And the last lesson of my book is called Gratitude, Living with Gratitude. Fantastic. Yes. I love that. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, Jane, oh, my goodness. I would just, I could just keep you here. I, oh. I think I say this to most guys, but, but I really, really mean it. I'd love you to stay. But before we, before we mm. go, I wonder if you would pray, because there are mm. people that are watching that, yeah. that, that this program will have really spoken mm. to them, and they mm. might be in that hopeless place. So would you pray oh. into that camera there? Oh, you know, the Bible says that God is close to the brokenhearted mm, right. and he Beautiful. binds up all their wounds or, and cures them. So, Father, I pray in this moment right now to anyone out there who feels hopeless and in despair mm. that you are the God of all hope and there is no distance in prayer. And Father, you know those who are watching this program who are out there. And I ask by the power of the Holy Spirit that you will reach into their hearts in this mm. moment, Father. I know what it felt like to be hopeless, but mm. hope is just like a seed. Whatever small ounce of hope that they have, mm. the Father, you will take that mustard seed hope and multiply it right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Let them hold on to it, Father. Yes, yes, Father, yes. visit them in their homes, wherever they're standing or watching mm. this program in this moment, and let them know that you have the final word on their life. Thank it's you, not Father. over until you say it. Thank you, Father. In the name of your son, Jesus, mm. our soon and coming mm. king for reaching right now mm. into the hearts of your people. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. Thank you so amen. much. Thank, thank you for being with us. A pleasure. And thank you for watching and God bless you. See you next time. Bye.